Hey everyone, welcome to Pearls of Eden. My name is Marilyn Acosta. Today is what, July the 15th, 2024. And today we're gonna talk about walking in humility. What does that look like in a world where everybody seeks to tout their accomplishments, boast in what they have done? We have to be very careful. You know, even in the Bible, it tells us prophecy is going to fade away, tongues will cease. But guess what? The word of the Lord, not one drop, not one tittle of it will fade away. And so when we understand that, we won't just boast in our gifts, but we'll boast in the creator of the gifts. And humility, we have to allow the Lord to show us, help me to humble myself, because I don't want you to have to humble me, Father. So show me what that looks like because humility is great in the Father's sight when we are able to become nothing. And in a society where it says that you have to make yourself known, you've got to toot your own horn, you must become something. Everybody's got to, that race to self-promotion, you know, to be seen. And the Bible tells us that whoever seeks to exalt themselves will be debased but those who humble themselves god will exalt everything's different in the kingdom of god so we have to be willing to become nothing nothing and let god be the potter and shape us into what it is he's called us to be and i often say that love is part of that i know this with all my being because the bible says how will you know how will they know that you are sent by me? He says, because of your love. And not the love of this world, okay? The definition of love, I often say of the world, it looks so different from the kingdom. But 1 Corinthians 13 tells us that love is patient. Love is kind. I'm looking at my wall. Y'all know it's on my wall. It does not envy. It does not boast. It is not proud. It does not dishonor others. It is not self-seeking in a world where everyone wants to tell you what they are, what their accomplishments, look at me. It's not self-seeking. It's not easily angered. People get so upset if you don't think the way they, they think. If you don't align to their understanding, they're ready to write you off, right? <laughs> um, it keeps no record of wrongs. I love this because we're in a society where if you do this for me, I'll do this for you. You cook this time, I'll cook next time right and it doesn't work that way we are to serve as we're serving unto the lord not looking for our payment from men um and that can be a tough one all right so there are so many areas that we can humble ourselves in if we look at first corinthians 13 i can just see a few right in the midst that i can so easily say i'm gonna work to humble myself in these particular areas and then i'll move on to the next area that the lord's speaking to me that hey you need to show humility in this area i love that it says that love it does not delight in evil but rejoices with the truth it always protects always trusts, always hopes always preserves love never fails and i do believe the lord had me to embody and to study this before i could really become a messenger because i think that if you don't embody this you're going to do more harm to the body of christ than help all right so it's really important and so as I was looking at James 2, the Lord's been taking me to James 2 for the past few nights. And one of the things that stood out to me was mercy, because I have said that this is a year of mercy. 2024, have we not seen mercy in so many ways, right? And I'm here to tell you, God has his hand on America. He's not finished with us yet. There's so much that must be accomplished. You all, we are in the greatest revival ever. And after that greatest revival, you know, there's going to be some things that will happen, right? We're not there yet, but we need to learn to embrace the moment. We need to learn to be in the times and the season that the Father is in so that we can celebrate in what he celebrates. Because trust me, there will come a time <laughs> when... It's not going to be so, okay? Let's take a look at James 2, verse 8. It says, if you really fulfill the royal law, according to the scripture, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. You do well. But if you show partiality, you commit sin 
and are convicted by the law as transgressors. For whoever shall keep the whole law and yet stumble in one point, he is guilty of all. And we have a lot of people that love the Old Testament, right? They're Old Testament prophets, I call them. They're ready to pick up the stone if you break one of those laws, right? Because guess what? In those times, if you broke one law, you broke them all. And this is the danger of trying to keep the law because who can do so? The law was meant to be a tutor, not for us to be able to, in our own strength, keep it. They couldn't. That's why he had to send his son, Yahshua HaMashiach, who would fulfill the law. And in him, we would have righteousness. We would have this liberty that we would be able to put on the garment of righteousness, right? And through him, we would have salvation. But if you try to keep all of those laws, you're not going to be able to. You're going to break one. And there goes your salvation, right? So he's saying, do not commit Adultery also said, do not murder. Now, if you do not commit a, a, adultery, but you do murder, you have become a transgressor of the law. He's saying, if you didn't break that law, you might have did something else that which would cause you to be a transgressor of the law, which would knock out everything else, right? And so this is the danger of keeping the law. So he says in verse 12, so speak and so do as those who will be judged by the law of liberty. He's saying, I want you to speak of those who know Jesus. I want you to speak of the law of liberty where there is grace, where there is mercy. Why is this important? Because you're going to be judged according to what you have measured out. If you're someone that lives under the Old Testament, you're going you're gonna to be judged by the Old Testament. He's saying, I don't want you to do that. I want you to speak of the law of liberty. This is powerful. I want you to do as those who will be judged by the law of liberty. For judgment is without mercy to the one who has shown no mercy. Woo! Woo! We all must stand in front of the Lord for judgment day one day. Even in this life. And it says that for judgment is without mercy to the one who has shown no mercy. Mercy triumphs over judgment. Did y'all get that? Do y'all hear what I'm saying? Or what the Lord is saying? Mercy triumphs over judgment. Y'all, if you don't get your shouting shoes on, did you get that? Whatever you measure, it's going to be measured back to you. You all here being an Old Testament prophet, want to stone everybody. You ain't got no grace and no compassion, no love, no mercy. You just out there being the judge. All of that's going to come back to you. But whatever a man soweth, he will reap. Whatever a man measure, that shall be measured back to him. But he says, those who rejoice in mercy, I've never seen that in the scripture all the days of my life. Those who rejoice in mercy, mercy will triumph over judgment. Woo! And, you know, so really James 2 is so powerful, you all, because it speaks about showing compassion it speaks about not showing favoritism based on how somebody looks. They look like they got a lot of money. They get to sit at the front of the church. You look like you poor. You just came from Homeless Parkway. You got to sit in the back, right? He's saying, don't do that. Don't show favoritism in that way. Stop looking at just you looking at the outward adornments, right? But he's saying, look past that because God looks at what's in the heart. And too many people, we can, you know, we can tear people down. We can see everything they're not. We're looking all on the outside and we miss a gift of God, right? Because we have this religious mindset. Again, it goes where we look at the speck in our brother's eye, but we got a whole plank. And I'm telling you, this is a season of correction. July is a, is a time of correction. It is a time of judgment. It's a time of harvest. It's so much to look forward to in July. But part of that is self-examination, you all. It's very easy to see the speck. I want to keep saying that, to see the speck 
in your brother's eye, but you have a plank in your own. Because people just don't judge righteously. The Pharisees and the Sadducees were not phony balonies because they were living these fraudulent lifestyles. They were considered hypocrites because the justice that they measured was for themselves grace, grace, but for others, condemnation. And they were doing so, so much of the similar things that they were condemning, but they couldn't see it. I'm seeing that in the church, right? People are so quick to call out other people's sin. They're so quick to call people false. But then they're doing things that are so similar, y'all. It's scary. It's like, did you just call that person a witch for doing this, but then you are on the backhand doing something so similar, but you don't even see it? Oh, God, help remove the veil from our eyes. How dangerous it is. I don't want to be a hypocrite. <laughs> no, no, no. Lord, help me to examine myself. Help me to see the, the, the plank in my own eye. Then I can help my brother. But y'all, I'm seeing people get on stages and they're condemning this man of God. They're sowing seeds of discord and this and that. Okay, baby, I'm coming. And y'all... It's like you're doing the same thing. It just look a little different. I mean, I mean, it look a little different. Do y'all hear what I'm saying? I got to go take my baby to football, y'all. So I'm going to leave it there. Let's walk in humility. Let's let the correction of the Lord. Let's not run from that, you all, because the Bible says he corrects who he loves. Are you a son of God? Are you a child of God? Yes. We got to receive that spanking from all this sometimes, but it's so that we can be redeemed so that we can get back on the right path because he wishes for none to perish. You got a lot of prophets that love to speak doom and gloom. They love to see somebody perish. They be speaking death curses. I'm like, oh, judgment is not going to be repent, right? <laughs> because whatever you're measuring is going to be measured to you. Old school prophets. Remember Jeremiah, he wept over the people. Yes, he brought judgment, but he wasn't rejoicing in evil. He wasn't rejoicing to send a reprimand. Y'all, let's pray for the body of Christ. We need prayer, right? We have got to unify. And that's what James 2 was talking about too. There needs to be, there has to be this unification that happens where there's not a division among the body of Christ. Meaning there's a level of honor and respect. And we may not agree on everything. Peter and Paul did not agree on everything, but they separated and they were able to continue to do the work of the Lord without dividing the church. We can learn a lot from them. All right, gotta go. I love you all to life. See you soon. Bye.